When it comes to getting good graveyard games, the Golgari don't muck around. Hello again, I am the Popper Guy, and today I'm going to talk about a brew of mine I call Rot Raven. It has gone through many forms, but Rot Raven is, at its core, a black and green mid-range deck that gets some value from the graveyard and makes use of Raven Crime's retrace ability. Raven's Crime is a black sorcery for one that has target player discard a card, and it can be cast as many times as you like from your graveyard, by simply paying the mana cost and discarding a land. This makes every land for the rest of the game potentially a discard spell, giving you more flexibility and reducing the downside to late mana flooding. Previous versions of this deck were more focused around taking advantage of Raven's Crime, and ran cards like Tilling Tree Folk or Yavimaya Elder. While fairly high value, these sorts of plays were mana intensive, and didn't do enough to interact with the board or disrupt the opponent's game plan. Instead, I've moved into a plan that generates value more independently of Raven's Crime, the Monarch. Thorn of the Black Rose is a black 1-3 creature for 4 mana that makes you the Monarch. So long as a player is the Monarch, they draw an extra card at the end of each of their turns. The Monarch can be taken by an opponent if they deal combat damage to whoever has it, or if they play a copy of their own Monarch granting card. Getting an extra card every turn is a very reliable way to win the long game in a lot of matches. Seder Wayfinder is a green 1-1 creature for 2 mana. When it enters the battlefield, you reveal the top 4 cards of your library and may take a land from them putting the rest in the graveyard. This card does a great job of expanding our graveyard, and is well priced considering it replaces itself with a land. Gorging Vulture is a newer card that also expands our graveyard for us. It's more expensive, but being a 2-2 flyer is a nice upside, and the small amount of potential life gain can sometimes make a difference. Putrid Leech is a 2-2 black and green creature for 2 mana that can give itself plus 2 plus 2 once per turn if you pay 2 life. This is my most recent addition to the deck. I expect it will help make the deck a bit more aggressive, while retaining value as a blocker that you can drop on turn 2 that still trades with a 4-4. Penumbra Spider is a 2-4 green creature for 4 mana. When it dies, it creates a copy of itself as a black creature token. This creature is a really great defensive line against a variety of decks that would try to take the Monarch from you. It's also tricky for many control decks to deal with. It needs to be killed twice, and the second time it's a black creature, which means some kill spells won't be able to target it. Excavating a Nurid is a 4-4 green creature for 5 mana. When it comes into play, you may sacrifice a land and draw a card. So long as you have Threshold, and you almost always do by this point, it upgrades to a 5-5 with Vigilance. Having a big beater at your top end that cantrips is pretty nice in this deck. Pitkeeper is a black 2-1 creature for 2 mana. When it comes into play, if you have at least 4 creature cards in your graveyard, you may return a creature card to your hand. This is a half-price Gravedigger if you can fulfill its requirement, and this deck usually can. Pitkeeper is the tool with the broadest use in this deck, because it allows you to pick which creature you want to bring back, depending on what the situation calls for. Now let's take a look at some of the control tools that the deck uses. Crypt Rats is a classic piece of black control. It's a 1-1 creature for 3 mana that has the activated ability, pay X mana, deal that much damage to all creatures and players, spend only black mana on X. This ability is very similar to Pestilence, but Crypt Rats can only be used once. Unlike Pestilence, you can play it on an empty board, and it can be recurred from the graveyard much more easily because it's a creature, which is why we use it. Fume Spitter is a black 1-1 creature for 1 mana. It can be sacrificed at any time to put a minus 1 minus 1 counter on target creature. This helps significantly with aggro decks that might otherwise get under you by moving too fast. Overall, getting only a single minus 1 minus 1 counter for a card might seem underwhelming, but as a creature, it can be recurred, and is a flexible tool of multiple uses. In our deck, it also helps ensure that Chainer's Edict has a lower chance of getting its value blocked by a 1-1. Chainer's Edict is a black sorcery for 2 mana, with flashback for 7 mana. It makes target player sacrifice a creature, and is probably my favorite piece of black control in all of Popper. This card is good against the vast majority of Popper decks out there, especially since it doesn't have to target the creature and doesn't care about flicker effects. Similar to Tortex, we want to keep the number of non-creature cards in our deck low, but this spell can be played from your graveyard, so it's okay if it gets milled. Drown in Filth is a green and black sorcery for 2 mana. You pick a target creature, then mill yourself 4 cards. The creature gets minus 1 minus 1 for each card in your graveyard, including ones that were already there. This card can be very awkward if you don't have at least a couple lands in your graveyard yet, but it helps the deck by contributing to the self-mill, and sometimes in the late game, it can take down very large creatures. Popper is 
filled with better removal options than this, but the card plays pretty specifically into our niche for this deck. The sideboard is a wide variety of tools at nine different cards, but the choices are fairly self-explanatory. The full deck list is available below in the video description. One of my favorite things about this deck is that it isn't as dependent on its graveyard as it first appears. If your opponents bring in graveyard hate, you can still do just fine. So if you're looking to play a deck that is flexible and does a variety of things, give this one a try. It's a pretty good deal at around $22. Thanks for listening. That's all I have for now. Comments are always super appreciated, and please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Magic the Gathering popper content.